minute one. Mrs. J, she is a 45 year old female from Delo who is currently admitted under us for management of an LRTI. She is a known case of rheumatic heart disease, multi multivalvular lesion with AF, who is on anticoagulation with warfarin for 10 years. At, she underwent a double valve replacement with tricuspid annuloplasty in 2016. In, tw in 2022 April, she was admitted with complaints of a diffuse abdominal pain, vomiting and hematuria. She had no fever, jaundice, loose tools or hematemesis or melina. An examination on, during her that admission, the, she, her pulse rate was 80, her uh, BP was 120 by 90, she was not tachypneic, saturation she was maintaining. She had pallor with bilateral pitting pedal edema. Uh, respiratory system was normal, her abdomen was distended, tender, guarding and rigidity was present. Her initial in investigations, her HB was only 5.5, her creatinine was 14.77, with the urea of 240, her potassium was 6.8, her PT was more than 2 minutes with an INR of more than 10, a previously documented uh, PT in uh, 2013 was, uh, in her previous visit was 43 seconds, the normal uh, INR of the 3.3. Her urine routine showed hematuria with uh, blood of 3 plus and RBCs of uh, 6,000. Her ABG showed severe metabolic acidosis with uh, pH of 7.1 and her bicarb was 10. An ultrasound done showed moderate ascites with the bilateral increased renal uh, cortical echogenicity. It was followed up by a CT which showed moderate ascites with hyperdense layering in the pelvis suggestive of an intramural hematoma and uh, hemoperitoneum. The diagnosis that was considered in her was uh, hemoperitoneum secondary to warfarin overdose, acute kin kidney injury, probable pre-renal secondary to uh, massive blood loss, chronic kidney disease, anticoagulation related nephropathy or a chronic cardiorenal syndrome in view of her RHD. My, uh, I'll be pressing on uh, ACRN. Warfarin induced nephropathy or it is also known as recently it's known as anticoagulant uh, related nephropathy. It is a type of AKI which is caused due to excessive anticoagulation. It was first described in the American Journal of Kidney Disease in 2009 by Brodsky et al. It is given as a diagnosis of exclusion usually as biopsy unless and until it's biopsy proven. Hence it usually is underdiagnosed. It has a higher incidence in patients with CKD and suprattherapeutic INR. The pathophysiology behind it is disruption of the glomerular filtration barrier which leads to hemorrhage into the Bowman space and renal tubules, which, which forms scars, which blocks the tubules, causing obstruction and uh, ischemia. It is, uh, it, uh, the scars usually cause, permanently decreases the nephron mass of the kidney. And furthermore, even if the tubules do survive the ischemic insult, they will have hyperfiltration injury that leads to an accelerated CKD progression. Diagnosis of ACRN, it needs a high index of suspicion if there is AKI and, uh, and excessive anticoag uh, anticoagulation. Biopsy is usually not performed in view of the excess coagulopathy, though it is the definitive diagnosis. Hence, only a presumptive diagnosis is made after excluding others. In a uh, picture with an AKI with an elevated creat of more than three point. Um, more than three, more than 0.3, or a more than 50% rise from baseline. We need to do urine analysis, urine uh, electrolytes, and kidney ultrasound. If any etiology is identified in these above, then ARN is unlikely. If there is no obvious etiology that is identified, and if the patient has a gross or a microscopic hematuria, then it needs, it warrants for a high suspicion for an ARN. The, the criteria is that is, there is no definitive criteria that has been established for ARN. But the first three uh, points in this, such as findings of dysmorphic RBCs in the glomerulus in electron microscopy, or if the presence of uh, uniform presence of hemorrhage in the biopsy sample, or if there's absence of any other active glomerular nephritis or other inflammatory changes. These three were the criteria, criteria that were established in the initial study which was conducted. But these are all biopsy uh, biopsy findings. Though currently what we've, uh, what can be used in our clinical setting would be a picture of an AKI with a, of an unknown etiology when the INR is more than three. Treatments and outcome, there is no proper prospective study that has been uh, for the management of uh, ACRN. The better alternative would be to switch to a newer uh, oral anticoagulation as they have a lower risk. And in most patients, creatinine do stabilize in weeks if they've had a normal kidney uh, function prior to the insult. Some may not recover function and they may, and may end up needing dialysis. The first study that was conducted by Brodsky et al. in, uh, in 2009, the, it was published in the American Kidney Journal. They looked at a total complete of uh, nine patients with biopsy, which uh, they after ruling out any other possible causes, 
out of the nine uh, patients, uh, there has been shown that uh, at, at their presentation with AKI, they had an uh, abnormal a INR of mean value of 4.4 with an increased serum creatinine value of 4.3. And uh, out of these uh, nine patients, six patients had did not recover from their AKI. Meanwhile, the other three who uh, other three recovered, and it was also noted that the three who had recovered had a normal eGFR three months prior to their uh, three months prior. This is a case report of uh, of someone with a similar uh, profile in in to our, to my patient. She is a fifty six year old female who is a known case of RHD with uh, mitral stenosis who underwent a mitral valve replacement. And with had an I presented with an INR of uh, 4.5. She also had hematuria with a five times rise in creatinine. Her ultrasound was normal and her autoimmune workup was negative. Her biopsy showed she had a biopsy and uh, biopsy which showed features of uh, such as for warfarin related nephropathy. For in her, acetyl cysteine and prednisolone was given. Prednisolone mainly for the anti in use at the anti inflammatory effect might be useful in mitigating on onset of the inter interstitial fibrosis. Her INR and creatinine was normalized, and uh, five days after which uh, warfarin was restarted in her. This is a study which shows that supratherapeutic INR it can lead to a progression uh, uh, progression of CKD. It was done by the same team which had done the initial study in 2009. The aim of the study was to see if excessive warfarin therapy could accelerate the progression of CKD. So they had assessed one uh, one of the uh, CKD patients who were on warfarin therapy. The results of the study showed in two groups, uh, out of the one or three patients, 49 patients had at least uh, an INR value of more than uh, three. Out of the 49, 18 patients had a concomitant increase in serum creatinine of more than, uh, more than an equal to 0.3. In, these, in this group of uh, patients, it was also noted that there was an accelerated uh, uh, subsequent CKD progression. Hence, the conclusion that was drawn from the study was or anticoagulation it can, it is associated with a faster progression of CKD in a higher percentage. Coming back to Ms. J, she was managed initially conservatively for her hemoperitoneum. Her AKI did not resolve post fluid restriction and transfusions, and she became she was dialyzed for her AKI. She three months later she had a permanent catheter insert uh, inserted, and she was on maintenance hemodialysis till October of 2022. Her warfarin doses were titrated later on according to her INR. In her, the points to favor ACRN for her would be the, the two differentials mainly considered for her CKD was one was a warfarin nephropathy. The other one was a chronic cardiorenal syndrome secondary to her RHD. She was uh, on chronic anticoagulation and she was never in proper follow-up. Her baseline creat in 2013, even prior to her uh, valve replacement was 1.64, indicating an already existing CKD. And uh, the fact of she had an AKI with a background of a severely deranged INR, and she had no features suggestive of an autoimmune pathology. To summarize, among patients who develop AKI and are on and chronic anticoagulant therapy, a presentive diagnosis of ACRN should be made if there is a severe anticoagulopathy is present and other causes of AKI has been excluded. The most important measure to prevent ACRN is to uh, proper titratement of the uh, anticoagulant dose, especially if the patient is a CKD patient. And it's also important to assess creatinine levels and INR every three to four weeks after initiating therapy for the first six to eight weeks. And even on other patients, it is, it is necessary to monitor creatinine if they are on chronic anticoagulation. Okay. Thank you, Doreen, uh, for your uh, wonderful presentation. Any quick questions? Uh, if not, we'll go to the next. Uh, the Week Shall Rise by Dr. Amrita Teresa from Medicine 2. Uh, uh, Dr. Hanstead, just, uh, just, yes, sir. Uh, just one question. Just one. I, know, I know you have already announced uh, that there is, uh, we don't have significant time. But what is compelling me to make this state, uh, statement, despite your, despite your, uh, you know, uh, ex explicit request, is that, uh, uh, well, you know, I am now head of quality in some places. What I am finding is that our consultants or our PGs should have a clinical reasoning to whatever we have seen. There is a hypothesis generation. What 
um, the hypothesis here is this patient has developed acute kidney injury or acute on chronic kidney injury, whatever it is, because the hemoglobin is five grams, maybe due to an internal bleed, maybe due to chronic renal failure, a creatinine was 17, all that is fine. But what was the clinical diagnosis is my question. So acute kidney injury on CKD, even then the, we should get to know the histology of that kidney before we proceed on to other diagnosis. My histology on that kidney would be if there was anuria, I would have gone in for acute cortical necrosis. So the diagnosis would be acute kidney injury, acute cortical necrosis due to what? Whatever may be the reason. I don't get into that. The second part is uh, uh, this anticoagulation, if I has been there for 10 years, isn't it? That's what I got yes, an idea. Yeah. Now, a drug that has been in use for 10 years uh, and incriminating it right now may not be appropriate. The reason why I'm saying is the mechanism of, of any drug reaction, only four. The four mechanisms are, one, if, if, no, I'm talking about acute, acute ADRs. I'm not talking about long-term ADRs as such. Uh, usually it is immune complex or is, it is due to a toxic um, reaction, or, third, or um, uh, thirdly, it, it, it could be a hypersensitivity uh, as such. And uh, uh, one more, I forget the fourth reason. What do you think is operative here? What is the mechanism that is operative here in the kidney? I have a feeling, I have a feeling that it is the hematuria that has caused this problem of acute kidney uh, um, injury. Because you have also stated that the INR was prolonged. See, I don't know how in the world the INR of two to three came, because we believe that that is an effective therapeutic range. And we have seen uh, for people taking uh, all these anticoagulants for disorders, in your case, is to prevent valvular, valvular clots. We use it for atrial fibrillation. We use it for established clot in the leg or lung, etc. That's the normal value, two to three. But this patient has been taking it for 10 years. But why did it happen today? That is my only question. So, sir, she has been taking for 10 years, but uh, she was on regular follow-up. Uh, till So the previous uh, PTINR that was recorded in her was two months prior to this, uh, to this uh, admission. So at that time, she, her INR was still 3.3. But in the next two uh, months, she had uh, probably become non-compliant with her uh, medications and she had presented acutely in this setting. What was the creatinine that day? I don't know, there was only PT, INR was only followed up. So when was the last creatinine check before the final one? The baseline creatinine her was 1.64 before. How long back? Not sure the exact duration, sir. So the question, the, that's, the question that sir is asking is, at what time duration did the creat rise? Is it an acute phenomenon or is it a part of a continuous process that cumulatively the damage to the kidney is happening no, sir. because it, of anticoagulants? That's what you're saying, no? In this, yes, sir, there is the definitely property. a baseline uh, chronic kidney disease that, that was ongoing, which is why her baseline creat was 1.64. But this acute rise was definitely second, uh, secondary to her uh, severe anticoagulation and more peritone. Because even prior uh, to that, her creatinine levels were always around 1.6 or 1.4, 1.7. She was maintaining in that level. I'm not sure of the exact month duration prior to which, uh, um, when it was done. But uh, when I was going through all the results, it was never, uh, it was never more than two in her. So acute rise, how do you say acute rise when you say two months back the creatinine was not checked? So any creatinine has, would be more than two months, then uh, you can't say acute rise, right? So something that is happening chronically. So uh, both clinically and by investigations, you have to find out because what sir is bringing up is that what is the pathology in the kidneys and what would be the most likely cause? Is it the drug per se or is it the bleeding or bleeding that is happening that is causing 
bleeding anyway happened acutely before she presented she had a hematuria and a hemoperitoneum and there's a significant fall in the hemoglobin so there's something that acutely has happened is all the creatinine rise because of that or is there something that the drug or the anticoagulants has been working over it over a period of time that information we don't have right yes, because sir. we don't have a creatinine two months yes, back and we don't know when the previous yes. creatinine was Clinically, we are looking differentiating between a glomerular or interstitial process by looking at the urine output. If you have a oliguric renal failure, you think there's a glomerular process, and if it's a non-oliguric process, it's an interstitial. So again, trying to differentiate between all those things will be some pathology that you are trying to look at. But I guess uh, that's what, sir. Anything you wanted to add, add or ask, sir? Not, not really, but uh, very personally, I would like, uh, uh, even from the undergraduate level, we have a clinical reasoning on what is happening. Have a hypothesis, generate a hypothesis, prove, prove that hypothesis, etc. Otherwise, what would happen in later, later years is that we will just jump to a conclusion saying this is the cause and effect and then make medical errors. Medi the third most common cause of medical of uh, errors in medicine, number one is infectious uh, hospital acquired infection, who is medication error, and third one is diagnostic error. Today, diagnostic error must be minimized to, you know, the you have wide number of etiologies. It could be warfare and it could have been renal, um, you know, viral infection, or many other causes. Just, just to reorganize our thinking and training. That is all I am trying to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dorin. I think, um, so I think something that sir has brought up is to really think, keep, I think there was more focus on talking about a new entity and that we should be aware of this entity. And I think that point is well covered. At the same time to think in that particular context, how closely does it fit to the uh, the entity that you've been talking about is what sir is raising up. So just keep it in mind that all those things should also be there. In the list of differentials, how did you go about? What was the final diagnosis? We labeled it as uh, the patient is on right now on maintenance dialysis. She was treated by dialysis for uh, eight months.